It's just ping pong. It's just ping pong. Hey, I'm here for ping pong. You the ping pong guy? No, I'm not. The, here, look at it. Says it on my shirt. Not the why, ping pong guy. Why do you even? What, what does that do for you? I mean, so do you want to know, know where the ping pong guy is? Oh my! All right, it's just he's right over there. Jeez. Thank you. Wait, where is he? Who me? Why? <laughs> what are you doing back there? Oh, I was just meditating. Why is everyone here so weird? What do you mean we're weird? Your hood's on backwards, and that's what I mean. I'm not learning ping pong if everyone's gonna be so weird. Fine, we'll do it without the weird stuff. Jeez. Where did you even get the mask from? But if you promise no, I'm ready. All right, this is what we'll be playing, all right? All right, this and this are mine. And step one of ping pong is getting the materials. You need three things. You need a ping pong table, you need ping pong balls, and you need a ping pong paddle. Once you got those, you go to step two. And step two? Step two is actually quite easy. It's serving. You just gotta hit the ball into the other side, like this. Alright, I got that. <laughs> step three. Probably the easiest one. Alright, I'm gonna hit it to you, and you gotta hit it back. That's it. Alright, I can do that. Alright, here I go. <laughs> I guess that works. Okay, alright, let's stop it. Hi, I'm Lily Fierick, and this is how to make a ring. Here's what you will need. A ring stick, wire cutters, some beads or gems, thin wire, and pliers. To take your gold wire and unravel it four times around. Now cut your wire with your wire cutters. Next, grab your ring stick and find your ring size. We're now going to take your wire and the bead you plan on using, and you're going to center it amongst your wire. Once you have done this, you can take your ring stick and start wrapping it in a crisscross manner around the size that you chose. Pinch the wire together and carefully remove it from the stick. Once you have something like this, you're going to take the two tail wires and you're going to start wrapping them around the bead. Now you want to take the remaining tail wires and start looping them around the ring and pulling them tight. Now you want to clip off the remaining wire and use your pliers to smooth any rough edges. Your finished products should look something like this. Hi, my name is Ryan Treadle. And today I'm going to show you how to make a classic marinara sauce. First you'll need two bay leaves, two stalks of celery diced, two carrots diced, one yellow onion diced, six to eight basil leaves chopped, two cloves of garlic, a pinch of salt and pepper, four tablespoons of butter, quarter cup of olive oil, and 2.28 ounces of crushed tomatoes. Then pour oil into the pan. Heat the oil over medium-high heat. Add onion and garlic into, into the pan. Soup the food into it soft and translucent for about two minutes. Add celery, carrot, salt, and pepper to the pan.
stir into vegetables yet soft. Then add crushed tomatoes. Basil and bay leaves to pan and stir. Simmer should be covered on low heat for one hour. The sauce will be ready when it is thick. Take out the bay leaves. They are not that good to eat. Once you get up, you finish the sauce, taste it. If it is too acidic, add up to four tablespoons of butter to help with the taste. There we go. Now that is some good sauce. Finally, enjoy your homemade meal. My goodness, what a mess! Hi, I'm Earl Dysel, and this house is a flip floppity mess! And today, we're gonna clean it. And I'm gonna show you how, just for all you messy little pigs out there. Number one, dusting. Dust gets everywhere, and it's annoying as sh Sometimes, it can take a while, but with the right attitude, you can do anything! tip. Vacuum the walls. It's very efficient and people will judge you. Sweeping comes next. You can sweep your ceiling, your friends, you can even sweep the roof! Next is folding clothes. Folding clothes is very productive and it leaves them wrinkle free. God, this is so f stupid. We're still rolling. The last thing is mopping. Now mopping is very important because it leaves your floors sparkly and shiny. And that is how you clean a house. Hello there.
son of a Help me. Thank you. What? Is it 737? What? Like the world Who are you talking to? Oh, God. Oh, my God. On 9-11, I was assigned to the 75 Precinct Detective Squad. I was in my office working on a an arrest from the night before uh, when I was notified a plane had hit uh, one of the Twin Towers in Manhattan. I was actually living in Florida at the time. Um, it was... It was like a few years after graduating from college, um, living with the in-laws. So, uh, yeah, so September 11th, uh, I was getting ready for work. Actually, I worked at Olive Garden at the time. Um, and as I'm getting ready, I turn on the TV and I see, you know, the planes flying into the building. Well, the one plane flying into the building. I go back to once that second plane went in, I knew immediately it was, gonna, it was a terrorist attack. We heard that... Uh, we had heard another plane had struck the Pentagon, and then we heard there was another plane heading towards the White House. Uh, we were shortly notified later that that plane, was, uh, that plane had uh, crashed in Pennsylvania. And then I remember um, a second plane hit, and then my, I remember my mother-in-law, who lived in the house next door to us, gave a call, and she was like, are you watching the news? She's like, did you see the, the plane hitting the building? And, at first, when the first plane hit, we thought it was just a, a tragic accident kind of thing. And then once we saw that second plane hit, it was kind of like, oh my gosh, like, this is like a legit, like, terrorist attack kind of thing. 
The New York City Police Department lost 23 officers that day. The very first officer to die that morning was a female officer by the name of Maura Smith. Um, we actually heard her dying on the radio. We could hear her grasping for air and saying she could not breathe, and then the radio went silent. Uh, I lost several good friends that day that I worked with in my precinct, Joe Vigiano, Mike Curtin, Ronnie Copler. Um, they were all friends of mine. They were, um, they were assigned to the emergency service unit, which, you know, they go into the, these buildings and do this type of uh, rescue. Um, I mean, I remember, so the aftermath for me, I remember um, just for days, maybe even weeks after, like, like I was driving and I saw, like I drove past a, a fire station and there was a fire truck with the ladder out and a giant American flag and I just started crying. I was just like, it, it was just, like, I don't think people realize like, like most of America like had PTSD for a while after 9-11 and there would just be just little things that would just kind of set you off. In my 20 years in New York City Police Department, the scariest day I ever had to experience. Juggernaut's a game where the seniors at Cuthbertson High School shoot each other with water guns. And there's a couple of safe zones, such as a school, and then your own house, obviously. And there's rules that have to follow with it. But you you get a random target every week, and then you have to get your one of your targets out. If you get both of your targets out, then you get a hint for the next week. And But at the same time, you also have to avoid the person that's hunting you. The fact that people are on my property, like it's a little creepy, but obviously it's part of the game, so it's all right. So as far as people coming on the property, um, I'm okay with it as long as it's not snooping around the backyard. You know, if they're hiding out in the front on the side of the house trying to trying to shoot her, I guess it's good. Um, but I don't like the whole sneaking around the backyard type of thing. Uh, my favorite part of the game so far probably has been seeing all the videos of everyone getting out because they're really funny. My favorite memory was definitely hunting down my target because at one point I had to sit outside of their workplace for like four hours. So the first week uh, our team eliminated our targets and we followed them to a Chick-fil-A drive through after hearing them talk about them going after school and math and then we got them when the lady was taking their order. I was going to my car to go to school and then they came around for my trash cans and shot me. The hardest part of the game so far has probably been like finding everything about our targets and eliminating them. My strategy was to try and stay alive and then get my target out at the end of the week. To be honest, I didn't really have any strategies going into the game. My goal was just to last as long as I could. Our strategy for the game is mainly doing research on our targets, figuring out like where they live, where they work, what they drive and then kind of finding out what their schedule is so we can, we're able to get them out. If I had one juggernaut, I would have saved the money and put it towards stuff for college. If we won, um, I would split the prize money with my partner and probably just put it in my savings. If I had to play again, who would it be with? Definitely like the people that laid below like all of high school. I probably wouldn't play again because it's stressful. <laughs> if I had the chance to play the game, I absolutely would. I think it would be a great experience and fun just to hang out with your friends and try to be the last man standing. It'd be fun. I do recommend the game to other people. You just have to play with like a good group. And I think with bigger groups, it's a lot of fun. So like obviously all 109 teams is really fun because there's so many different options or you really don't know who you're gonna get. Music for me, it's um, it's therapy in a way for me. Like when I'm stressed out or something in my mind is causing me to 
not do any, do stuff right. I listen to music, I turn that on, and it relaxes me. I started learning music when I had to start practicing music for my first recital. Before, I had just seen lessons as like a chore, kind of. But once I really got into it, I realized how much I loved it. Like the latest fashion, like a spreading disease. The kids are strapping on the way to the class. My favorite band is probably Metallica. Just because they, they're so good and just have so many different genres that they do. And I mean, Madison, my guitar teacher, got me into them. And now I like them a lot. Valentine's School of Music is a huge deal for me. It's been a part of my life probably for five years now. I started off at a my old private school, Christian school, and we would play such boring songs, like Amazing Grace was my first song I ever learned. And we would just strum like three chords for two hours, and I would get so bored. And once I hit Valentine's School of Music, I was able to expand my knowledge of the guitar and I actually was able to end up singing too, which was a huge thing for me because I love singing too now. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without further um, teaching at Valentine School of Music. Grace that taught my heart. I think music brings me together because it's each like a puzzle and then it fits in perfectly. And then you're like, once you reach that point where you like play super well together, it's like, wow, guys, we like made it here. This is like such a crazy accomplishment. It's like go like conquer the world and do everything. In the future, I see myself continuing with music in a sense of a hobby. I prefer music to be an escape for me. I don't want it to become a job. I want to continue it. I believe that music will change throughout the years. There could be new genres um, with new technology, and it could just be an even bigger impact on my life and on others. into flying mainly I guess uh, because it's a passion and a love. I like to fly because it gives me the freedom to go where I want to go quickly. It's like a time machine. So I like to fly, fly because um, I actually enjoy adrenaline. Um, I like to be able to, you know, get away from everything and just enjoy the scenery. Um, I feel like it's a challenge too, so being able to accomplish that challenge intrigues me. It started when I was about 12 years old with my dad and was taking me for an airplane ride and there was none available. Uh, so the lady told us to come back another time. And as we walked out, there was a, a gentleman that had kind of noticed the disappointment and invited us over and looked at uh, his airplane and uh, then upon showing us around, uh, he was like, let's just go fly. So for about 15 or 20 minutes, he took, he took us up. And then um, that was actually for a birthday present. I was interested in flying in college back in the early 90s. I had a friend that, uh, that had graduated Emory Riddle and kind of came through the town and uh, got me interested into it. It's something that, um, you know, you got to have a passion for it. I love it. That weekend, I had actually signed up for um, volunteering at Peachtree City uh, Air Show. And when I got there, I had met a female flying a F-35C. So when I got a chance to see her in action and I got a chance to meet her and talk to her, um, you know, I was actually, like, super excited and very um, interested I've had several different planes, but the one I have now, the one behind me, is a Cessna 414. And it's a, it's a traveling plane. It's made to go from A to B. 
uh, pretty fast, pretty high, um, all weather. So I don't have a plane yet, um, <laughs> um, but well, no, I train on a Cessna 172 and a Cessna 150, um, and then maybe one day, you know, purchasing a PC-12 and flying in the G4 is something that I would like to do. So the, the community here is so friendly. Um, everybody is so willing to help. Everybody's willing to take the time to make sure that you understand everything. Um, just being here for, you know, a short limited time, like everybody is so sweet, so amazing. Great, we have a great group of guys here that's kind of like a small family. It's like a little slice of heaven, and that's the best way I can, uh, I can describe it. It's a, what a great place to fly. Yeah, I love the freedom you have here in the United States to be able to be able to do this. You get in and you don't know anything. So for me, I like to learn. So because you don't know anything about it, you know, there's so many things to learn. You know it, you know it Yeah, my ride is sweeter than your ride You know it, you know it Don't you wish you were us Don't you wish you were us You know we own this party And you know we run this town I'm about to steal your girlfriend I'm about to knock you down Sorry, but your train has left the station Maybe you should try a permanent vacation Never even got an invitation, did ya?
Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the place, in the place to be, to be. Chipmunks, chipmunks on the M.I.C. MIC. Which, doctor? Which doctor? Everybody can they do it? Can they do Come it? on, people, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Come on, shake, 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 Everybody at the front. Come on, shake, 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 shake,
I'm gonna feel a mind who's going me well too. And when I'm dreaming, well, I know I'm gonna dream. I'm gonna dream about the time when I'm with you. When I go out, when I go out, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who goes along with you. And when I come home, when I come home, yes, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who comes back home with you. I'm gonna be the man who's coming home. Oh boy, look, I got an idea. I'm gonna go down to Schmendrick's and pick you up some nice chopped sirloin. Must be blood. Tui, that's disgusting. Must be fresh. I don't wanna hear this. Beep, beep. Does it have to be human? Beep, beep. Does it have to be mine? Beep, beep. Where am I supposed to get it? Feed me, see, mo. Feed me all night long. <laughs> that's right, boy. See Mo feed me all night long. <laughs> Cause if you feed me see Mo, I can grow up big and strong. <laughs> you eat blood, Audrey, too. Let's face it. How am I supposed to keep on feeding you? Kill people? I make it worth your while. What? You think this is all coincidence, baby? The sudden success around here. Depressed coverage? Look, you're a plant. An inanimate object. Does this look inanimate to you, punk? If I can talk and I can move, who's to say I can't do anything I want? Like what? Like deliver, pal. Oh. Like see you get everything your sacred, pleasing, heart desire. Surge you like a Cadillac car on a gas shot on jackpot. How about a date with Hedy Lamar? You're gonna get it if you want it, baby. <laughs> How'd you like to be a big wheel? Dining out for every meal. I'm the plant to make it all real. You're gonna get it. Hey, I'm your genie. I'm your friend. I'm your willing slave. <laughs> Take a chance. Feed me in. You know the kind of eats, the kind of red hot treats, the kind of sticky licky sweets I crave. Simo, don't be a putz. Trust me in your life for sure that rival key touch. Show a little initiative, boy. Walk up some guts and you get it. I don't know. Come on, boy. I don't know. Lighten up. I have so, so many strong reservations. Tell it to the Marines. <laughs> you didn't have nothing till you met me. Come on, kid, what will it be? Money? Girls. One particular girl. How about that, Audrey? Think it over. There must be someone you can eat a six real quiet like. And get me some lunch! Think about a room at the Ritz Wrapped in velvet Covered in clear
Have a seat, protagonist. My name isn't protagonist. Oh. Anyway, you know what I'm here for. <laughs> Come to stop me, have you? Well, you're too late. I won't let you get away with this. My unspecified villainous plan is already in motion. You can't stop me now. Oh, shut up. I'm not here to play your little game. Oh. I, uh, I knew you'd come here to stop me. That's why I thought ahead and tied you to your chair. Wait, how are you doing that? I knew you would tie me to my chair. That's why I cut the ropes before you tied them. <laughs> Impressive. But I predicted your prediction. While you were cutting the ropes, I zip-tied your hands together. You're only making this harder on yourself. Well, you're one to talk. You're not really in a great position right now. What? How? <laughs> Surely you don't intend to challenge me. You don't want to do this. I've watched Kung Fu Panda at least five times. Live, well, played through all of it. Twice. <laughs> that won't work on me. What? Why not? I'm not actually here. That's right. You were FaceTiming me this whole time. I've been played. That's right. I've been fooled. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's right. Oh. I got you. Oh, goodness. Actually, I've got nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hold on. What is that? No. No way. How did... No! How did you find my house? My house? No! How did they find my house? How did they find my house? No. I see you finally showed up to the battle, my friend. Now, are you ready to burn in the depths of hell? I'll go. We take each other to great lengths during a war. You, for example, killed my mentor, Dr. Ace. And I? I destroyed the Zodiac army. I have killed your commanding officers and made sure they were dead and buried six feet underground. And me? I've learned a lot about love, life, and friendship in the process. You learned about the power of love and friendship with a sword that turns into a gun and learn spandex. But this, this is where it all ends. This is the big finish. Transform!
What? Scott! What? Does it not work or something? Let me guess, it got tired of your monologue. What? I, no, I, I got this! Did I get the batteries in or something? Try, try turning it on and back on, it usually works for me. No, look, okay, it, it's gonna be really cool and epic. I made sure it was walking last night. There's, there's so many lights, it's cool, it plays music. Uh, so awesome and, and better than yours. What can yours do? The exact same thing. Oh my god, okay, you're, you're no help. I am just gonna go home and try to fix this stupid thing and find something else. You know what, I'm done. I'm gonna be a quick second, just wait for you. I'm gonna go. Uh, I could help you, you know. I, I have a reservation at Iowa with my wife. What do you mean? Uh, what's going on? What do you mean we're getting foreclosed on our house? Uh, fine, I'll just go to Best Buy. Alright, okay, I'm back from Best Buy. The guy said that this, oh, this would work well. And you know what? I trust him. He looks nice. He even gave me a free warranty. So let's do this. Set up! Set up! Set up! Alright, we can stop this! Oh, oh, we have the fight. Actually, can we just call this off? No, I spent $60 on this! I can't get that money back! It's the middle of the day, and I have a day job. It doesn't pay rent. <sighs> Fine, okay, um... Next Sunday. Does that work? I can't do that either. That's a WWE pay-per-view. Really? You're going soon? Hey, we can call pool. Yeah, I don't see why not. Wait, you want to just call this off and get dinner? Yeah, sure. I don't even know why we hate each other. Uh, well, you stole my idea for profit. And I killed your mentor. I also turned you into a cyborg to be my slave to be a ruthless killing machine. Oh. Well, I'm, uh, all water on the bridge. Let's go eat dinner. Did I ever tell you that we are brothers? Really? <laughs> Small wall! Coming right up! X! X! X!
You're wrong. Okay. Good evening, and welcome to the 11th Annual Cuthbertson Film Festival. I'm Mr. Colburner, and I'll be your host for the evening. I've been the film teacher here for the past 11 years, and it has been an honor teaching here at Cuthbertson. I've taught in many schools before arriving here at CHS, but none can even compare. I pinch myself every day because I can't believe I get to teach in such a remarkable place. And what is it about this school that makes it so special? I think I know what it is. It's the people. It's the administration, it's the parents, it's the other teachers, but most importantly, it's you guys, the students. And I'm so incredibly blessed that I get to spend my days with such amazing young people. Each semester I'm blown away by the things that you guys create. And this is where it all happens, right here in room G201. And for those who don't know, the videos you're about to see tonight are 100% student created and they all come from two of the three classes that I teach. Adobe Video Design, also known as Film 1, and Advanced Film Editing and Production, also known as Film 2. So students, as you watch tonight, just know that you must take Adobe Visual Design, another awesome course, before you can take Adobe Video Design. And all these courses are honors courses, so you should totally take them and earn those weighted GPA credits, you know. So enough of that stuff, let's talk about how this evening will go. So throughout the night, we will play videos from various categories, and in each category, two prizes will be awarded. Immediately after we watch the video, you'll be asked to vote for your favorite in that category, and those votes will be tallied, um, and the video that you, um, the video with the most votes will win the audience choice in that category. The audience choice winners will be announced at the end of the show. The second prize that I'm gonna award is gonna happen immediately after you guys vote, and that's what I call the best such and such. So for example, best stop motion. And that winner was determined by me, and it's based on many factors, like things like effort, uh, meeting right criteria, cinematography, creativity, and most importantly, entertainment value. And each winner tonight is gonna receive a trophy, um, so you should definitely come and see me after this weekend uh, to make sure you pick up your, your prize, okay? All right, so enough about that stuff. So let's, let's get this show on the road, what do you say? All right, so before we kick things off, um, I just want to give a special shout out to Brian Davis and the Career and Technical Education Department of uh, Union County Public Schools. Um, without their support, we wouldn't be able to do any of this stuff, really. They've supported the film program in this county for, for forever um, since I've been here, before I've been here, actually. Um, so thank you so much to you guys. Um, so we have a special little treat tonight. We actually uh, have a couple of cameras set up at a few of the watch parties that we have going around town here in Waxhaw. So first I'm going to check in with uh, Camilla and Jacob. So let's jump over to them. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Alright, and we are live with the 11th annual Cuthbertson Film Fest. Uh, I'm Camilla and this is Jacob. Take off that hat right now. Look, okay, it's a classy event. I have to dress nice somehow. You have the shirt, why do you need the hat also? The hat provides a sense of class. Okay, Camilla, you should know this. Okay, I, I really need you to take off the hat. It, it's gonna look bad on camera. I thought this was a meal gun. All right, uh, we're gonna go back to Kai and Evan. Hmm, okay, that was interesting. All right, um, and then our other watch party is over at Kai's house, so let's uh, let's take it over to Evan and Kai. Yeah. Yeah. I said, your mother. Oh crap, we're live. Hey guys, welcome back to the annual 11th Film Festival. I'm here with Kai, and I'm Evan. We're over here at Kai's house. It's quite insane. We are so excited to be here, guys. We're really excited to watch. And, um, and, and watch. It's great, it's we're, awesome. We're and really you, excited. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we'll be right back. Brady, don't mess anything up. Hmm, interesting. All right, so uh, without further ado, everybody, uh, let's just kick it off. It's the 11th Annual Cuthbertson Film Festival.
Kept you waiting, huh? All right, we're back. What you just saw were the uh, animated logo nominees uh, from Film 2 class. Uh, for that particular project, students used uh, a program called After Effects, which is a motion graphics program uh, to create animated logos, like company logos, uh, that you would see like before a movie or a TV show or something like that, or after a TV show. Um, so what, what happens now in the program after each category, uh, we're going to put a screen up that has a like a bit.ly uh, shortened web address that you go to and it's going to take you to a Google form where you can vote for your favorite in that particular category and at the end of the night uh, we're going to reveal the winners the audience choice winners in each category so I'm going to go and put that up on the screen and on the other side of this I'm going to announce the best animated logo which is one that I chose as the best again at the end of the night, you'll see the audience choice winners. Okay, so here's the code, here's the screen. Uh, go ahead and go to that bit.ly address, cast your vote, and we'll be back in just a second here. All right, so we're done casting votes. Like I said, we'll reveal those at the end of the night, the winners. Uh, but right now, I'm going to announce the winner of Best Animated Logo. So, uh, Farah, can I have the envelope, please? I have Farah here uh, helping me out. You may go. Such an obedient girl. Taco Bell, Lowe's, Harris Teeter, Fifth Third. Okay. And the winner of Best Animated Logo is Amelia Benjamin. Good job, Amelia. All right, guys. Um, let's check back in with, the, uh, with Kai and Jacob. Okay, excellent. Uh, maybe things will be better off over at the other watch party with Evan and Kai. Great. Okay, well, I don't think we're going to be checking back into those watch parties anytime soon. Excellent job. Alright, so now the next category is dialogue scene. 
Uh, for this category, the students were asked to write an original dialogue scene uh, using script writing software. Uh, they then uh, got into groups, they voted on their favorite script out of those people in the group, and then they produced that script and they made it into the dialogue scenes that you're about to see right now. So let's check out the nominees for best dialogue scene. Could you stop drinking that blueberry Red Bull? Becoming it's not even okay guys, I've gathered you here to share some important information. Mr. Kohlbrenner is evil and he's using the film fest to wreak havoc on Waxaw. Yeah, okay. What? Oh, we figured Kohlbrenner would turn out to be evil eventually. Correction. Most of us realized that Cole Brenner was evil. Speaking of which. Thank you. So you guys are okay with the concept of brainwashing and secret evil plots to destroy the world through a small scale and local film fest? I mean, I wouldn't call it that small scale. Semantics aren't important right now. Look, I had a whole speech prepared. Well, you can still do it if you want. I'm feeling kind of patronized. No, no. Go ahead, go through with your speech. I'm sure it's great. That didn't make me feel better, but whatever, I, I guess I'll give you my speech anyway. So I was in Han's room, right? Yeah. Where else would you be? Oh! Yeah. 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 We got him good! We got him good! Got him good. Oh. oh, man! Anyway, I was in Han's room working on my final project for his class. He's complaining about his computer, how the Wi-Fi is slow, teacher stuff. Here's the interesting part. He says, it's a lot worse than normal. Apparently Kohlbrenner's doing some kind of project in G and everything's just so slow. A project using all the building's bandwidth. Normal Kohlbrenner stuff, right? Right? Jules bursts in, just runs right in, and she's all like, Amelia, we need to talk about the film fest. We go into the hallway, and she tells me everything. She was walking in the hall, and who does she hear but Trey talking about the film fest? He's all, yeah, it's going to be totally awesome. Colbrenner told me all about it. Basically, we're going to hook up the film fest to my mind control feed, and when we do, all the viewers will be under my control. He even gave me these anti-mind control goggles and everything so I can still watch the film fest. And I'm like, no way, that can't be true. Until she gave me these. She stole them off of Trey and I wore them while watching the film fest and look at me, here I am, unbranched. Can't say the same for those in the watch party. So, what do you guys think? The glasses were a nice touch. I mean, it didn't unconvince me that Cole Brenner's evil. Could have been shorter. And I'm you too! You guys are the worst. Regardless, now that we're all on the same page, what do you think we should do? Why are you asking me? You just gave like a five minute exposition dump on Colbrenner being evil. You're the expert on this between the five of us? Um, well, I, I have no idea, honestly. I'm just the messenger, you guys are the officers. I was thinking you could just figure something out. Okay, okay, cool. Cool, just save the world on a whim. Okay. Great! I believe in you guys! Whose house is this? Wee.
Aha, Mr. Mon, you finally decided to join me. For a second, I thought I was going to get stood up. Can you, like, stop spinning? <laughs> no! Well, of course I'd show up. You threaten my wife and kids. I'm surprised you aren't willing to abandon them as well. You of all people know I didn't mean- Can you stop <coughs> spinning for two seconds? Either way, Mr. Bond, let's get to the chase. If you want to save your wife, you're gonna have to make a choice. What kind of choice? Well, either you take this envelope, chancing what was inside of it, and try to save your wife, yourself, or- You sick bastard! But I haven't even told you what the other option is yet. The one that's supposed to sound way worse because I'm an evil maniac who kidnapped you- I'll never let you get away with this. Your reign of tyranny will never last. Dude, I haven't even told you what the other option is yet. You're sick, absolutely disgusting, you're a menace to society. Will you let me finish? Well? Fine, what's the other option then? Maybe I would have told you sooner if you would have let me. Anyways. The second option is this here brain chip. When I insert the brain chip into your brain, you become my 100% completely loyal brain chip servant because you'll be brainwashed due to the brain chip nature in your brain. I'll do the chip. Uh, uh, are you sure? You don't even want to like try to see how easy or how it is to just you know save your wife and have an epic fight scene with me? Uh, dude, the, the, the envelope was supposed to be the easier option. Uh, the second one is way horrible because I would have had you open up the envelope and then uh, have a fight scene with me, which you would lose. Uh, uh, all right then. Uh, my evil plan just keeps getting better by the seconds. Time to take over the world then, I guess. Next step, your wife! Kill her. James, it's me. This isn't like you, snap out of it. I know you're still in there. James, remember that time last Wednesday when I said to you, we're out of milk, can you stop by the store on your way home from work? Remember that, James? James, do you remember the 21st night of September? Love was changing the minds of pretenders. What the f You're back! You're back! What the f Mr. Death. I swear, I didn't do anything. Nonsense. You and your friends on the evening of January 22nd, 2022, did nasty things. That's bullcrap. I'm innocent. I swear, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> Explain these. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, the boys group chat. I... Yes, the information that was joked about for many, many years. The information that was never supposed to be seen by any superior intellectual other than the boys. But now... Oh, my lawyer! Where's my lawyer? Ah, uh, uh, Mr. Depp. You and your friends have violated the law of conversation. It's a violation of my freedom. Violation of my rights. I know my rights. Yes, but this is a different situation here, Mr. Depp. You and your friends have joked about many things, including slapping the president in the face with many different things and in inanimate objects. It is also stated that you have made jokes about many controversial events without any hesitation. With plenty of emojis. You and your friends have managed to practically make fun of everyone with the use of vulgar language. It is also stated that you're 
The president isn't pushy pee. With many other things I'd rather not talk about. Well, would any of these things be illegal? Or per se? Nonsense! You know what you did! This is beyond illegal! What are you dudes doing in here anyway? All right, so who's got the goods? I guess I do. That's it? What do we risk our lives for then? Now you listen here. There may not be a lot, but the quality is undeniable. I'm talking Kit Kats, Hershey's, Reese's, the whole nine yards. Whoa. And that's not all. We got another shipment coming. We have another shipment? Where? The old barn, quiet truck. The owners won't even see us that that's dependable. My foot. If we're doing this, we're doing it in public or we can see these guys. Otherwise, forget we'll about it. We'll do it their way and we'll like it. If you can't agree with that, I'll have to ice you right here. I was just saying we should be careful, boss. Sorry. You should be. Don't disrespect me like that again. All right, boys. Let's move out. I don't know, I should have gotten a text by now. It's a setup! Run! Go get the guy. It's nerf for nothing. You betrayed me. You betrayed us. Why? It's nerf or nothing. All right, folks, uh, those were the nominees for Best Dialogue Scene. Money, money, money. Now, uh, it's time for you guys to vote again. So go to the bit.ly on your screen, cast your vote. Uh, only vote once, and at the end of the night, we will reveal the winners in each of those categories for the Audience Choice Awards. And in just a moment, I will announce the winner of Best Dialogue Scene. Okay, uh, time is about up for casting your votes for audience choice uh, for best dialogue scene. Now it's time for me to announce the winner of best dialogue scene. Uh, so, Farah, add the envelope, please. Thank you, you may go. 
All right, winner. The best dialogue scene. Jack Trombley, Jacob Steinhaus, Kai Feely, Morgan Copperthwaite, and Amelia Benjamin. Congratulations, you guys. Our next category is best commercial. Uh, this is our first film one category of the night. Uh, for this project, students were put into groups. Uh, they decided as a group uh, an idea for a commercial, came up with a plan, wrote a little script for it, and then went out and executed the filming and then the editing of that commercial project. Um, so we're getting ready to watch, but actually we're going to have a quick little commercial break first before we have our commercial presentations. Tonight at 11 on Action 9 News, a crime spree sweeps Waxhaw, North Carolina. The culprits? Cuthbertson High School students. Learn the latest details and tips on keeping yourself safe. Also, Jerry the Monkey Man brings some furry friends into the studio. All this plus sports and weather tonight at 11. Hey, 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 hey! I'm taking bets, guys! Come on! Yes. Forget the student safety. I love a good fight. The lunch here is very healthy, nutritious, and delicious. At this school, our students are very focused on their work. We have excellent math teachers here. As you can see, so guys, two plus two is seven. You just gotta open your mind to new possibilities. Our art teachers are very encouraging of our students. Wow, Summer, that is a cool looking dog. This is a grasshopper. Oh yeah, I see it now. Wait, Mr. Flappy Jack, does this look good? That is fantastic, Carrie. Thank you. Absolute worst drawings I've ever seen. I hate my students. I hate my job. I just. I... Tune in Friday nights at Sounds like a steal. What do I have to do? All you need to do is eat this pill. What did you do? I'm giving you a deal of a lifetime. Take it from these happy customers. I've never felt this free since I was born, and no one's gonna take it from me ever again. I mean, I've never been happier. I don't have to work a second with my new clone. There's nothing better than having a clone. We take it from me. Side effects may include confusion, dizziness, shortness of breath, fever, chills, sneezing, death, identity theft, and world domination. Please contact your doctor if you're taking any form of... Are you tired of paying taxes? For the child. It's not about the baby, it's about the money. Are you tired for paying for child support? Yes! We'll give you the best defense possible. I know how to sweet talk the judge. I proclaim OJ Simpson as Wayne Lynn. I know this guy. Definitely go. Ooh, a Snickers bar. <laughs> not guilty. The LOL helped me get out of life in prison and they are very well equipped to handle any legal situation. And if that doesn't sell you on a law floor, then check out these great testimonials. The LOL helped me evade taxes between the years 1996 and 2008. They are great. Bad boys! What the 
Call the League of Lawyers and we'll give you the best defense this side of the OJ trial. I even got football signed by him. Call 704-843-1400. Welcome to the League of Lawyers. If we don't bail you out somehow, then find somebody else. So that thing took video out for a while. Remember, it's like, like I showed the video. It just did, and I'm really showing up. Oh my god. Good popcorn. Good popcorn. Alright. This is so lame. Who would even think to buy these? Well, it's a big show. Oh. sunglasses in my class <laughs> eat my shorts grandpa okay these pit vipers are the bomb booyah how can you be so cool and hella fly pit vipers changed my life All right, folks, there you have the nominees for Best Commercial. Uh, it's time for you to get out those phones and to cast your vote for your favorite commercial. Now, uh, it's time to announce the winner of Best Commercial. Farah, may I have the envelope, please? Thank you, you may go. Okay, winner of Best Commercial, The Pit Vipers, Sean Boys, Katie Granger, Jack O'Rourke, Evan Hamula, and Francesca Corona. All right, um, before we get into our next category, which is a documentary, um, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about um, Film Club and uh, what that is and, and what the film festival um, is with that. So the film, fest, uh, bleh, the film club is responsible for putting on the film festival. Um, and my officers are Camilla Liget is the film club president, Evan Hamula is the film club vice president, uh, Kai Feely is the film club secretary, and Jacob Steinhaus is the historian. Um, and for some reason, they have just disappeared from their watch parties. Not quite sure where they are. Um, but anyway, they are uh, integral parts of this uh, presentation. Uh, so with that said, let's move on to our next category, which is documentary. This is another Film 2 project. For this one, students were able to choose whatever topic they wanted to make a documentary on. Uh, they spent a lot of time and effort in planning this out, 
writing questions, interview questions for people that were going to be in their documentaries, went out and executed, got B-roll footage. Uh, you're about to see all of that in action here. So here are our nominees for Best Documentary. Literally 20 minutes late. What do you mean? You don't have a watch. What are you looking at? Evan, what took you so long to, you know, to cause us just completely... It's not important. The subject at hand is how Kohlbrenner is evil and old. You know, it's weird. I know Kobano's even all, but you would think it would be Han that would take over the world first. No, Han would be way smarter than to just attack the film fest. But why Mr. Kohlbrenner? I mean, was it the bullying, the jokes about his kids, the jokes about his wife? I mean, what really caused him to crack? His back? Cause he- Oh! oh, 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 oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got pretty good! I got pretty good! I got pretty good! Yeah, okay, 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 wait. Jokes aside, this might explain a lot of what's going on. It was the fall of 1995. The recently created Cuthbertson High School, founded three years beforehand, was set to have its foundation changed forever, as its funding was cut drastically. What you're about to watch is a dramatic reenactment performed by very serious actors. Uh, hey, Colbrenner, uh, you got a second? Sure thing, Principal Carr. I've got some good news, and I've got some bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? I guess the bad news? I've decided that your program is a big waste of time and money. And our tight budget, we have to put money into things that are way more important than your program. So I've decided to cut you by about 90%. What? No. No, you can't do that. What about the children? Well, then you want to hear the good news? Sure, I guess. Your wife left you for me. How could you do that? How could you? How could she? Uh, I guess that's only good news for me. So, it's just bad news for you, buddy. Oh, and by the way, you're no longer invited to our Friday nights at Chili's. No, not Chili's. Come on, no! Imagine no more triple dippers for you at Chili's. See you at Chili's this afternoon, though. Total JK, later loser. Now, without the power to rule over children with an iron fist in his classroom, the children felt more comfortable with bullying him. Uh, Taylor, can you get back to work, please? Why don't you just go home? Nobody likes you. Hey, Morgan, do you think you can get back to work now? You're such a loser, Mr. Culprider! You smell like a group of people who eat pork chops on a Sunday! No, Jack, you can't go to the bathroom right now. No, you shut up, dumb, idiot, loser face. The children began to attack him like a pack of wolves around a wounded animal. Like predators, the children sensed the wounded prey in Mr. Colbrenner. Tune in next week for another episode. I took my first commercial flight when I was 18. And I just thought that the experience of flying from one place to another and being able to travel was so cool and I became fascinated with it. Started it as a hobby a couple years ago. So I am a uh, first officer at a regional airline. It's just pretty much transporting passengers and uh, commercial flying. Well, I became interested in aviation. Um, from a couple of uh, people that I had in my life that flew planes. My first mentor, my wife's uncle, and I also worked with someone who used to fly in the Navy. Uh, I've always wanted to be a pilot my entire life. I went to Hawaii when I was little. I looked over my mom right when the plane started taking off, and I was like, you know, I want to be a pilot. To get your private pilot certificate, first you need to pass a written exam. The second thing you need to do is obviously take flight instruction in an airplane to learn the maneuvers and to learn how to fly trips to different airports. And then you have to do a certain number of solo hours. And then you have to do an exam with the designated pilot examiner. 
To be a flight instructor, you have to have, it's around 250 hours is uh, the program that I went to. You have to get your private pilot certificate, your instrument rating, commercial rating, multi-engine, and then I did my certified flight instructor. I flight instructed for 1,500 hours to build time for the airlines. And then once getting to the airlines, I had about a month of ground school and then a month of simulators and then uh, IOE. My career goals are to inspire other people to fly. I don't feel like there's many women that know that they can fly. And so even though I want to be an airline transport pilot and fly commercially, I hope that I can always uh, inspire people and teach them along the way so that they know they can go the same route that I did. When someone understands something that I'm teaching, it's the minute they catch on to see their joy and excitement. Uh, it makes my heart smile, I guess is a way to put it. <laughs> When you're flying up in the air, miles above the earth, you feel like all your problems are back on the ground. And all you focus on is flying the airplane. The views are incredible. And then just the amount of responsibility you have, having all the people in the back, you know, counting on you, it's a, it's a pretty awesome feeling. Being a private pilot allows me to fly to places quickly that would take a really long time to drive to. It's pretty insane feeling just knowing that you can pick up and go. You could fly places for lunch. I flew up to Virginia to visit a friend just for the day. Yesterday I went to breakfast with a friend and it was an incredible feeling just saying, oh, instead of driving, let's go up in the air and fly there. Uh, you know, at the airlines we get free travel benefits. So at any given time I can literally just book a flight for free and uh, go anywhere I want. Um, I enjoy it being able to uh, go as I please, I guess. There's so many things you could do when you have access to an airplane and the ability to fly it. I don't know if I know anything about ghosts. I know that there's a lot of people that would argue that they have experiences with ghosts and then there's a lot of people on the other end of that would argue that uh, they're full of baloney and, and all of it's made up. What do I know about ghosts? Not a whole lot. I, I have watched some TV shows and, and see some of the things that, that you see on there. I have some thoughts about it, but I'm not so sure that I, I know much at all about ghosts. I've always kind of taken with the paranormal activity is each person has their own experience with it and how you kind of define it is unique to each person. I would say a ghost, based off of what I think people perceive it to be, would be some sort of energy or power of a previous person that has lived on this earth and has come back to visit in some capacity. I would say a ghost is, is some sort of supernatural being, whether that, that person departed, you know, a month ago or a year ago or a hundred years ago or whatever. Uh, that, that's what I think a ghost is. I think a ghost is a residual energy, an imprint that's been left behind. Is that, you know, this supernatural being walking around doing these things? Is it aware of what it is doing? Um, or is it more, you know, energy that's just being displaced at that particular time? Have I ever seen a ghost? I, I don't think I have seen a ghost, um, but I do have a, a few things. I grew up in a in an old farmhouse in uh, southwest Ohio and there were some experiences that at least as a kid made me feel like there was a presence in the house. Um, I was probably uh, four or five years old and there was a, a little figurine football player that was my favorite toy that I played with and um, I was missing that. I felt like a presence had told me where to go to look for that figurine and I went right to that spot and I found that 
right where I felt like I was told to go to. I do believe I have seen what at that time I could have equated to a ghost. I was about 16 or 17. My grandmother had just passed away, riding in a car with a good friend of mine. Something was in the road, and as I swerved to miss it, I would swear to this day that I saw my grandmother. If there were ghosts in our school, I, I don't think I would react in any way because if there's ghosts in our school, then there will probably be ghosts everywhere. I would want to know the backstory to where the ghosts came from to like really be able to grasp are there ghosts in our school. I don't know about any, any ghosts at Cuthbertson High School, but I will say this. I get several alarm calls uh, throughout the, the year that happen in the middle of the night and uh, there's no explanation for them. An alarm will go off in a classroom somewhere and I'll be over here at two or three in the morning walking the building and I've never actually found a reason for those alarms to go off. So could it be a ghost setting off an alarm? I don't know. Possibly. I do believe in the supernatural. Um, I do believe that there are things that are happening that aren't explainable. Like I said, it doesn't scare me to think that there could be ghosts in the school. No, the idea of ghosts in the school doesn't particularly scare me. The idea of ghosts in any building that I'm in doesn't typically scare me. It can't cause me harm. My favorite VR game would have to be Pavlov, which is like Call of Duty. And I'd say it's my favorite because I can literally just play Call of Duty IRL instead of sitting in my gaming chair. Rec Room is a pretty good VR game. Uh, you know, run around, jump with friends. Guys, some Roblox type stuff where you just go into custom games and mess around. My favorite VR game is probably Resident Evil 4 because it takes a classic and turns it into a VR first person experience. My favorite VR game is Beat Saber. I like it because I can listen to all my favorite songs and like play a little game with them. My favorite song is This Place About to Blow by Kesha. You know, it's the one where it's like, This Place About to Blow. You know that one? The future of VR could be something that's accessible to everyone and it could be so sleek that we don't even notice that it's on. VR could be like full motion type stuff. Like you don't even need to move with like the joysticks on your controllers. Like you'll just be able to like walk around and you'll just move in game. The future of VR could involve where every headset uh, has full body tracking. Uh, so you don't need to put on any extra additional technology to do it, or it could involve uh, less things, like no control controllers. It's probably going to be used for searching homes and places like that, but I feel like it could totally be a new type of gaming, like a whole, whole new type of uh, system where everybody games and like, connects around the world. VR definitely has practical uses, such as uh, with like Zoom meetings, instead of just having them in Zoom, you'd have them in VR. So like it's kind of like a teacher te teaching you in person, but not completely yet. VR does have many practical uses. Uh, I think a lot of it could be, uh, you could use it to experience places uh, that you can actually go to. Like if you wanted to go to the Grand Canyon, uh, but you couldn't actually go there to experience in VR. You could use it for <laughs> military training. You could use it for surgeons to practice in hospitals. The metaverse, where if you and your friend own the same console, which is the Quest 2, you can meet each other in a personalized home or city anywhere around the world.
My name is Travis, moneymaker uh, from Charlotte. Uh, moved out to Waxhaw, you know, six years ago. A big time collector for sure. I do. That's what started this. Uh, grew up pretty much anything around here, you know, you see in the shop, I grew up with. And uh, collecting, you know, then led to, man, I guess, start selling it, you know. Especially uh, teas, vintage teas I collect. Yeah, somewhat same here. Somewhat. I, just, yeah, yeah. I feel like collecting, it's just, it's fun, honestly, like to spend money and just get new clothes. Because, yeah. I usually go, when I collect, I usually go for jackets, shoes, and shirts, vintage stuff. Big stuff I collected hard was uh, Batman. Got me, you know, into it. Um, 60s stuff, um, all the way up to like the Superpowers collection from '84. You know, by Kenner. All the classic cartoons from the '90s. You know, Ninja Turtles, of course, was hitting heavy. Um, so you just buy it, you know. And didn't really look at it as collecting though. Really, you just look at it like man, I just need another figure, you know. I just like how the way all their stuff looks and. They don't make stuff like they used to. Motivation for running a store, for one, you know, obviously is to, uh, you know, provide, man, for my family, you know, make a little money. But, you know, the main thing is uh, to meet new people, you know. The motivation of, you know, working from home for so long, doing online sales was cool, but after a while, there was, like, no meaning behind it, you know. And uh, so this gives a meaning. It's more than just selling, obviously. It's meeting new people, I mean, like yourself, you know. Uh, put me in a situation where I'm in right now, you know. So that's the motivation is to, you know, go out there and talk to people and learn, you know, something new about somebody, you know, and find people's interests, you know. So that, that's that's the motivation. Um, for me, speedrunning would be... Speedrunning is... Trying to beat the game. To complete a video game. As fast as possible. As fast as possible. Speedrunning, for the most part, started in 1996. It was created by competitive players wanting to be the best or be the fastest. One of the earliest mentions of speedrunning was a website based on Quake speedruns. And basically people would try to finish the game as fast as possible in the game called Quake. As far as I know, the main website used to keep track of speedrun records is speedrun.com. And they've also been um, included in many platforms such as YouTube and Twitch, and it's just become more popular. Twitch is a streaming service where people can live stream themselves doing daily activities or regular games or really anything. Many people live stream their speedrun attempts. Twitch has always been a very, very big platform. It gives them an audience. It gives them a uh, purpose to beat it. So many people stream and get exposure for the quickness of their speedruns and they can be easily verified. There's just a variety of content that can be found throughout Twitch and when popular people start to get into this branch of gaming called speedrunning, it tends to get others to try it as well and it just overall bolsters the overall community. What goes into a speedrun? Uh... Well, a lot of time and effort. What goes into a speedrun is definitely game knowledge, um, just general skill, quickness. Speedrunning has evolved over the years through a bunch of new skips being found. The more time spent on a game, the more you'll find out like different routes and exploits that can be found in the game. A bunch of new like builds for example. Um, sometimes even solar flares can cause changes in a speedrun. I believe now that there are new games being developed such as 
VR games and just new technology in general. I believe speedrunning will be somehow incorporated into those new technology and it will just be a, a development scene. All right, everybody, it's time to vote for your favorite documentary. So if you would uh, get out your phones, go to the bit.ly address on your screen and cast your vote. As a reminder, we will be revealing the winners of the audience choice, the people you're voting for right now at the end of the evening. In a moment, I will be announcing the winner of Best Documentary, which are the ones chosen by me based on lots of different criteria as mentioned at the beginning of the show. here. Okay, it's time to announce the winner for best documentary. Farah, may I have the envelope please? Thank you, you may go. Okay, and the winner of best documentary is that one about those airplanes, Amelia Benjamin. Bringing home a lot of trophies tonight, Amelia. Bringing home the hardware. All right. Um, so we're done with documentary. Our next category is one of my favorites. It's a fun category, and that is the Lip Sync Project. This project is a Film One project. Uh, for this one, students uh, had the choice of working on their own, working in pairs, working in a group. Uh, they choose a song. Uh, and then they create a lip sync video. Uh, not quite the same as music video this one, they have to lip sync all of the lines of the song. Um, it, but it's a, it's a lot of fun, you're about to see. So uh, let's check out the nominees for best lip sync video.
Stop.
Cause one's got a weasel and other's got a flag One's on the pole, shove the other in the bag With the rerun shows and the cocaine noja The daytime crap of the folk singer slob He hung himself with a guitar string A slab of turkey neck and it's hanging from a pigeon wing To get right if you can't relate Trade the cash for the beat, for the body, for the hate And my time is a piece of wax Falling on a termite Who's choking on the splinters So
All right, everybody, let's get out those phones and cast your vote for your favorite lip sync video. Uh, at the end of the night, we'll announce the winners for audience choice. All right, now uh, it's time to announce the winner of Best Commercial. Farah, may I have the envelope, please? Thank you, you may go. Okay, winner of Best Commercial, The Pit Vipers, Sean Boys, Katie Granger, Jack O'Rourke, Evan Hamula, and Francesca Corona. All right. Okay, it's time to announce the winner of Best Lip Sync Video. Fair, may I have the card, please? Thanks, you may go. All right, the winner for Best Lip Sync Video. It's a tie. And the winners are Loretta by Lynn Job and Where's My Mind by Jacob Steinhaus. Congratulations, you guys. Now, our next category is actually a new one, and it's actually the first new category we've had for the film festival in quite a long time. Uh, and it's called the Lyric Video. And in this project, the students use After Effects to create a lyric video, they animated text essentially, to do the lyrics for a popular song. Um, so I hope you really enjoy, I really love this project. I have really enjoyed what they made. I hope you guys enjoy them too. Thank you. 
Start spreading the news I'm leaving today I want to be a part of it New York, New York These vagabond shoes Are longing to stray Right through the very heart of it I feel a tick in my head And he's sucking on my head In the morning I'll be dead If he doesn't leave my head Why can't he go away? Why does he have to stay? Maybe he wants to play But I can only say That I'll get you, I'll bless you, I'll bless you, I'll bless you And I'll get you, I'll bless you, I'll bless you Yeah, you 
All right, folks, those are pretty cool, aren't they? All right, so get on there, go cast your vote, uh, go to that bit.ly address, and we'll announce the winners at the end of the night. And we're back. Uh, Farah, may I have the envelope, please? Faster next time. You may go. All right, and the winner for best lyric video, that song about the ticks, I don't even know what it's called, Peyton Townsend. Congratulations, Peyton. Excellent, excellent job on that. Actually, really all those lyric videos I was blown away by. All right, folks, uh, our next category is the how-to video. Uh, for this one, this is a film one project. For this video, just kind of self-explanatory, students got to pick a topic that they wanted to educate people on, uh, and they created their own how-to videos. Uh, the key to this one was A-roll and B-roll. A-roll is the voiceover or the person talking, and the B-roll is the action shots, uh, which you're, you're going to see examples of in just a second here. So let's, uh, let's all check out the how-to videos. I think I've seen enough. We need to stop Cold Runner. Yeah, obviously, except there's one problem. How are we going to break into the school? I can't imagine we just waltz on in. I mean, why not just go in head first? I mean, we film club officers. They'll likely let us in. You know, then we can just sneak into Cold Runner's room and beat him up and just show him who's boss, and then boom, the, the whole thing is solved. I don't know. I mean, he probably already has an army. How are we going to sneak past them? We're going to have to do this stealthily. Kai's right. Stealth is the move here. So, have any of you guys broken into a building before? I've broken out of a building before. Okay, we're going to ignore all the questions we have and move on. Uh, obviously, we don't know what we're doing. No worries. I know exactly who to call to help us with this. YouTube. How's that even a... That one's probably okay. Salutations, Amelia Army. This video is for bank robbers, jewel thieves, and miscreants alike. If you do not fit in one of those categories, leave this video now. Creating a heist is simple. First, you must assemble your team. There are many avenues for heist success, but the standard model is as follows. The fixer, the con man, the hacker, and the mastermind. And if you can afford an inside man, acquire one. Before the heist begins, you must formulate a plan with your crew. When your plan has been devised, collect your equipment. You'll need lock pick, laser pointer, map of building, duct tape for hostages, mask and gloves, a fun snack for if you get hungry, copious amounts of weapons, and a getaway driver. It seems my driver isn't here yet. Driver? Yes? Will you be providing getaway? No, unfortunately I've come in with a run-in with the law. I see. 
in the event your getaway driver does not arrive. Unfortunate. Before a heist, remember to practice calisthenics. You may need them to squeeze into vents, twist your way out of locked vaults, or... Hey you. Yeah, you. Today, I'm going to teach you. The ingredients you will need are asparagus, butter, herbs, garlic, and milk. For seasonings, you will need salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Next, prep your oven by preheating it to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. While your oven gets up to temperature, pat your steaks dry with a paper towel to remove excess moisture. Then season them liberally with salt, black pepper, and a dusting of garlic powder. Be sure to roll your steaks around the edges, just so it's evenly spread out. Now let's work with your asparagus. Take your asparagus and with a sharp chef's knife, cut off the woody white ends and discard them. Aggressively snatch your asparagus and say the phrase, that's my asparagus, and drop them from a high height into a bowl. The rubber band should magically come off at this point. Next we are going to spice up the asparagus with a little bit of olive oil, salt, fresh ground black pepper, and optionally some lemon juice and or lemon zest. Place your asparagus into a baking dish and throw them into your oven with your french fries for about 10 to 12 minutes depending on your preferred texture. Back to the steaks. You're going to want to preheat a skillet on medium high or high heat until it is smoking hot, just like me. When you lay your steaks down, you should hear this sound. After two and a half minutes, or three minutes, flip your steak and let it sear on the other side. After about a minute, turn your stove top to low heat and throw in your butter, garlic, and herbs. Now baste fast and furiously up to, but not limited, 100 times. And I'm not kidding. Once your steak reaches your desired doneness, which should only be medium rare, remove your steak from the pan. Let your steak rest for th three to four minutes to lock in the juices. While your steaks are resting, prepare your Bernays sauce by throwing in a quarter cup of butter, one cup of milk, and whisk in your packet of Bernays dust. Whisk every few minutes until your sauce thickens. And now it's time to plate. Are you sad because you can't drive? Yeah, you. Come with me where you'll learn the basics to drive. First, we want to enter the car safely. Oh, wow, that's certainly one way to do it. You're still going. Let's try the right way now, shall we? All you have to do is open the door, get in, and close it. Easy enough. Before you start the car, always put on your seatbelt. Safety comes first. Don't forget to have your foot pressing firmly on the brake when starting the car. When you are accelerating, you want to make sure to ease into it. Oh, well, I guess we're reversing, so come back and let's try that again. Let's make sure when you are reversing, you need to turn around and look through the back window to make sure there aren't any cars coming. Oh wow, that's not good. Stop! Ooh, let's try that again. It's okay to feel scared to try again, but everyone makes mistakes and you would rather make them now rather than when you are on the road. When you are accelerating, you want to make sure you can look both ways. You want to make sure you ease onto the gas and slowly increase your speed from there. Pedestrians always have the right of way. Oh, they're a feisty one. Lastly, you want to always make sure you turn on your turning signal whenever you want to make a turn, or if you are pulling into a parking spot. Now, you have learned the basics. Remember to be careful and always have a supervisor while learning how to drive. Hey you. Yeah, you. Do you want to play the guitar? Do you want to look cool while doing it? 
Well, I got some tips for you. First of all, is that a Vineyard Vine shirt? All right, Country Club, first step. Let's get you a better shirt. Perfect. Now, all you gotta do is lose that hat. Let that luscious mane flow. Hey, bud, over here, over here, yep. All right, next step, do you have a guitar? What is that? That doesn't count. You think acoustics look cool? Didn't think so. All right, step two, get a cool guitar. And remember, the more expensive, the better. Ah, look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? All right, let's get that guitar out. You have a pick? Great, let's start. Okay, let's, what, what is it? What is it, is that a, is that a tuner? What, do you think Eddie Van Halen tuned? Shut up, no, shut up. Step three, never tune, ever. Got it, you got your pick? All right, good, let's start playing. All right, turn that amp on. Step four, max gain and max volume. The higher the gain, the less mistakes you hear. All right, let's hear it. Stop, 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 stop. Are you kidding? Play something heavier. Hi there, I'm Jacob Steinhaus, and I've been collecting retro video games for nearly a decade, and I'm here to show you how you can too. First important rule, and this is probably the most key one, is don't overpay for some games. A lot of games now kind of skyrocketed in value, and because of that, the prices have gone up significantly, pull from like 10 years ago. So if you have a game that you want to collect, either because you have an interest in, or maybe because it's just kind of a more rare game that you know is valuable, don't overpay for it. Just wait until you can find a copy for cheaper, or just wait until the value goes down. It's not worth paying like $200 for a game that you might not even enjoy. A second thing is finding out what exactly you want to collect for. You can collect maybe for a specific system, systems that you already have, systems that you want to have, a specific genre, or maybe a franchise, pretty much whatever you want to collect, you can probably start doing just that. Um, so you can pretty much choose whatever interests you. And a third rule of thumb is to try going to more local places than by shopping online, because there you can see what games are, they probably have a better selection than various online retailers, and most importantly, it's you know supporting local businesses. Online is convenient, but it just doesn't have the same merit to it as a physical store. But if there aren't any physical stores nearby you, such as G2K, which is where this footage is from, uh, then I would just suggest going on eBay or Craigslist Goodwill Auction is also a good example, uh, pretty much any online retailer that is trusted. But stay away from Amazon because often I see cheap Chinese bootlegs being occupied on there, not the official thing. Hopefully this can help you into getting a start into your collection and then impressing your friends with how much money you wasted on video games. The number one step to make any pita pizza delicious is to par-bake your bread. So to par-bake your bread, first what you're going to do is you're going to cover it in olive oil, garlic powder, and Italian herbs. Pop that in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for two minutes, and then once it comes out, we're going to top it with some tomato sauce, some mozzarella cheese, and now for more toppings, I'm going to go in my backyard and get some basil, or you can just buy it from the store. I have some cherry tomatoes in my kitchen. And for the cherry tomatoes, we're gonna slice them in half. And now for the basil, we're gonna do a rough chop at first and then make it more fine by rocking the knife between our hand and the cutting surface as seen here. The goal of this is to make it sprinkleable onto the pizza, like that. It's perfect. Now we're gonna add our tomatoes, add our basil, 
and pop that in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for five minutes. While it's cooking, feel free to clean up your workspace just to keep it more organized. Now we're gonna pop that out of the oven and then cut it. I chose four pieces because it's kind of small. And now drizzle it with some balsamic vinegar and we have our finished product. Now the greatest thing about a pita pizza, like this one, is that it's just like an actual pizza, meaning that you can have so many variations with toppings and all of that type of stuff, and you can really make it your own. For example, we're gonna saute some chicken in some olive oil, salt, and pepper. Skip the sauce on our parvake bread and add cheese. After it's cooled off, we're gonna add our chicken, and we're gonna pop that in the oven, same temperature, same time. It'll come out just as crispy as before. Now we're gonna to top with ranch, hot sauce, cut, and enjoy. This is actually maybe my favorite one out of the bunch. Now the thing is you can mix and match as you please. This one right here was just anchovies and pepperoncinis, but you can add literally anything you want. Turkey, ham, even pineapple. Okay, go cast your votes for your favorite how-to video. All right, let's see who won the best how-to video. Farah, may I have the envelope, please? Thank you, you may go. All right, winner of the best how-to video. Every time I watch it, that steak and the asparagus and the bernays, all that, oh man, looks delicious, great cinematography. Michael Eels Miller, congratulations. All right, uh, so that brings us to another one of my favorites. Uh, this is another Film One project. This is the Stop Motion project. And for this one, uh, the students had to create, at a minimum, a 30 second stop motion video, uh, or they could do animation as well, uh, frame by frame animation. And uh, they could include some live action in it, or it could just be straight up stop motion. Uh, so let's check out the nominees for best stop motion. Yeah, okay, guys, we need to come up with a plan. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I think I might have an idea. That's my mind. Alright, guys, check it out. I'm afraid. Me too. Hey guys, it's Kai here, and welcome to my video. So, the first step of the plan is that we gotta get into the high school, but how are we gonna do that? If we all take a Red Bull and shake them up really good, the blast will send us right up to the roof. Now we can enter safely. But before we go inside, we have to eat an entire rotisserie chicken dinner, because like Evan says, you can't heist on an empty stomach. 20 minutes later. Now that we've all been fed, we're gonna take our Red Bulls and head inside. But there's minions everywhere, what are we gonna do? It's okay, we're gonna defeat them, just like I've shown in this really, really amazing stop motion video. The next step is our Red Bull break, but oh my gosh, what is that over there? Dun dun dun! It's evil Mr. Colbrenner. Oh my gosh, he looks so old, ugly, and bald. Ew! But wait. What is that he's got with him? His laptop with the film festival! I'll throw a Red Bull and destroy it, saving the day. And I have the power to do this because Red Bull gives you wings. 
All right, guys, what'd you think? I think it was pretty good. Well, for starters, what, the progression what you was completely up, like, terrible. Like, there was no like, guys, guys, guys. Kinda was god awful. Anyway. All right, with that out of the way, I'm gonna make a plan, and then we're gonna kick Colbrenner's shiny bald head. Cause he's old! Evan, the joke is dead. Let's go back to that first room. Yeah. Guys. <sighs> I thought it was funny.
that's mine. <laughs> Okay, folks, let's uh, go to that bit.ly on your screen and vote for your favorite stop motion video. And as I've been saying throughout the night, we will reveal, we're getting closer, and we're going to reveal the winners of audience choice uh, based on your votes, uh, your live votes uh, for the different categories tonight. And now we're going to announce the best stop motion video. Farah, envelope, please. Thank you, Amigo. We need to stiffen up the defenses around the school. All right. And the winner of best stop motion. It's a pretty sad one, but it's pretty well executed. Um, Baby Shoes for Sale Never Worn, Sean Boys. Excellent job, Sean. Congratulations. 
Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so our next category uh, is the movie scene category. Uh, this is the culminating project in our Film 2 class. Um, for this one, students got to, they had a choice. They could either make an original movie scene that they wrote and came up with on their own, or they could actually remake an existing movie scene from like their favorite movie, okay? I think we've got a really good mix of nominees here. We've got a few that are brand new movie scenes you've never seen before, and then we've got a few that are remakes that I think you're going to really enjoy a lot. So let's check out the nominees for Best Movie Scene. Alright, so I know that we don't have a lot of time left. Cold Winter has a lot of people brainwashed already. So, I've come up with a plan. Uh, through the best method of sharing information, PowerPoint. Ooh. Ooh. Wait point. for it, wait for it. There it is. This is Cold Runner, and these are the viewers of the Film Fest. Uh, as you can see, Cole Brenner has brainwashed them all. <gasps> That's bad. That is bad. It is in fact bad. Now, if we don't stop Cole Brenner, this will be all that's left of Cuthbert's in high school. So in order to combat this, we're going to need a hacker. Now, Kai, I've heard that you've had some experience being a hacker. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did accidentally get into that orphanage's funding account that one time by guessing the password over and over again, so yeah, you can call me a master hacker. Hey, hey, guy. Yeah? Why are you wearing a different jacket? I spilled Red Bull on the last one. Oh. Uh, I don't I think. Don't, I don't think they'll notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be fine. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Kai, why are you wearing a different jacket? God damn, damn it, it, Jacob! All right, perfect. So you're gonna do just that so we can get into the school. I mean, obviously we can't just, you know, walk in. They're probably gonna have a lot of Uh, Evan, could you not do that right now? Uh, I can't go heisting on an empty stomach. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Yeah, but I'm like doing a presentation right now and you're making a lot of noise. Well, you're not the boss of me. I literally am. Okay, it's fine. We're ignoring it. We're gonna move on to the next slide. And I didn't finish this slide, and I'm freaking out. Okay, regardless, Evan, you're gonna be our muscle. You're gonna bash a couple heads in, take care of anyone we need to, you know, out of the picture. Awesome. I've always wanted to punch people without any repercussions. <laughs> Alarming, but I'll ignore it. Okay, the final part of our plan after we've gotten into the building. We are going to use a special flash drive that will take down the film fest and save the day. This flash drive has the information that we need to take down the film fest. Could you really not find- Jacob, if you make fun of my Power Rangers USB, I will make you see God. Please don't ruin me. With that out of the way, Jacob, I will need you to stand watch while I put this USB into Coldburner's computer so we kill the film fest. Now this is gonna be very difficult for all of us. It's gonna be long and arduous and we might not make it all back, but... All right, I actually don't have anything super inspiring to say, so, uh... Let's go get arrested for breaking and entering! Let's Yay! go punch kids without our repercussions! Wait, I can't wait to have a felony! Let's go get Red Bull! No! Kai, you have a problem. I'm ashamed of you. Let's go. I can't believe I raised the sun like this! I don't even want my chips anymore! Nina speaking. Just a moment. Corporate accounts payable. Nina speaking. Just a moment. Corporate accounts payable. Nina speaking. Hello, Peter. Just a What's moment. What's happening? Corporate accounts uh, payable. we have sort of a problem here. Yeah, uh, apparently you didn't put one of the new cover sheets on your TPS reports. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I forgot. Mmm, yeah. You see, we're putting cover sheets on all TPS reports before they go out. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, I have the memo right here. I just, uh, forgot. But, uh, it's not shipping out till tomorrow, so there's no problem. Yeah. If you could just go ahead and make sure that you did that from now on, that would be great. 
and uh, I'll go ahead and make sure you get another copy of that memo, okay? Yeah, no, I, I actually Bye -bye, have Peter. the memo right. Hello, Phil. What's happening? Three days uh, after their plane vanished in the night, there is no sign of John Kennedy, his wife, and her sister. The sea seems to have consumed them. The Coast Guard has officially switched Mil its goal from Hi. search and rescue uh, to search and recovery. Could you turn that down just Here a little bit? Uh, uh, tonight. I was told State police that I could listen to the radio from a reasonable volume from, 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 from 9 Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I know you're allowed to. Just, I was thinking more like a personal favor. Well, I, 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 I told Bill and Sandra could, could listen to her headphones at during work while she's filing. I, I, I could then listen to the radio while I'm collating that. Okay. So I, 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 yeah. I don't want right. to see the problem. Uh, I, I like to listen to the radio at a reasonable volume. Hi, Peter. What's happening? We need to talk about your TPS reports. Yeah, the cover sheet. I know, I know. Uh, Phil talked to me about it. Yeah. Did you get that memo? Yeah, I got the memo. And I understand the policy. The problem is I just forgot this time. And I've already taken care of it, so it's not even a problem anymore. Ah. Yeah, it's just we're putting new cover sheets on all of the TPS reports before they go out now. So if you could just remember to do that from now on, that'd be great. All right. Just a moment. Corporate accounts payable, Nina speaking. Just a moment. Corporate accounts payable, Nina speaking. Just a moment. Corporate accounts payable, Nina speaking. Just a moment. We gotta tell him. No, no. I don't care what the doctor said. We gotta tell him now. Ricky, the, the doctors told us that you should figure this out in your own sweet time, but... Ricky, you can walk. What did you just say? He's telling you the truth, man. It's all in your head. No. You sick sons of bitches. I mean, you walk in that door on your two legs all fat and cocky, looking at me in my chair, and you're telling me it's all in my head? I hope that both of you have sons. Handsome, beautiful, articulate sons who are talented and star athletes and have their legs taken away. I pray you know that pain and that hurt. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Don't you put that evil on us. You are not paralyzed. I am so paralyzed. No, 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 no. Okay, don't be tough love. No, he needs to know. Right. He's always crying. Tough love. Okay, tough love it is. Wake up, idiot. You know what I am? You want to see how my life is? D don't do it. Don't do it. You want to see what's going on here? Don't you stick that knife in your leg. Every time it rains, it rains. Parents from heaven. Shoo be doo be. <laughs>
Street. Don't you know each cloud contains banners from heaven? Should be to be. You'll find your fortune falling all over town. Be shining and your umbrella. Is up, 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 upside down and trading for a bag of yeah. sunshine and ravioli, macaroni. If you want the thing you love, you must have a pizza, holy baby. And when you hear thunder, don't run under a tree. It'll be pennies from heaven for you and me. Now come over here, boy, Sam. And every time it rains, it rains. And don't you know it's confident? Every time it rains, it rains. You find your fortune falling All over town, all over town, all over town Be sure that your umbrella Is upside down and tweedly bop How about Zooty, who's the right? Eagle, I'm a hungly Zoomaloo, the Zoomaloo Oh, godly boy, sorry Hey, I'm a hard boy you leave them with us? Your people? Assuming, of course, they are still your people and not Barone's. Does it depress you, Commissioner, to know just how alone you really are? Does it make you feel responsible for Harvey Dent's current predicament? Where is he? This time. What difference does that make? Depending on the time. He may be in one spot, or several. We're going to play games. I'm going to need a cup of coffee. Ah, the old good cop, bad cop routine? No. First start with the head, the victim gets all fuzzy. He doesn't know when the next see. You wanted me. Here I am. I wanted to see what you'd do. You didn't disappoint. You let five people die. And then you let Dent take your place. Even to a guy like me, that's cold. Where's Dent? He's mob fools. And he wants you gone so they can get back to the way things were. But I know the truth. There's no going back. You've changed things forever. Then why do you want to kill me? <laughs> kill you? I don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No. no. You. You complete me. You're garbage who kills for money. Don't talk like one of them. You're not. Even if you'd like to be. See, to them, you're just a freak. Like me. They need you right now, but when they don't, they'll cast you out like a leper. Their morals, their code, it's a bad joke. Dropped at the first sign of trouble. They're only as good as the world allows them to be. I'll show you. Chips are down. These 
civilized people. They'll eat each other. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. Where's Jens? I have all these rules, and you think they'll save you? He's got it under control. I have one rule. And that's the rule you're gonna have to break to know the truth. Which is? The only sensible way to live in this world is without rules. And tonight you're gonna break your one rule. I'm considering it. There's just a few minutes left, so you're gonna have to play my little game to save one of them. Them. You know, for a minute, I really thought you were dead. The way you threw yourself after her. <laughs> Look at you go! Does Harvey know about you and his little mo? Where are Like he's making a choice. Where are One life or the other. Your friend, the district attorney, or his bussy ride to me! You have nothing, nothing to threaten me with. Nothing to do with all your strength. <laughs> no. But don't worry. I'm going to tell you where they are. Oh. And that's the point. You'll have to choose. He's at 250-52nd Street, and she's at Avenue X on Cicero. Which one are you going after? Rachel! How many times do I have to tell you? It's I have brought peace, freedom, justice, and security, security to my new empire. At least you know the next line is, Anakin, my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy. Yeah, yeah, I got the next couple of lines, I know. a fine looking Ooh. Gatorade. What do you think you're doing? Getting my Gatorade that I bought? Your Gatorade? No, 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 no. I bought this Gatorade with my own money. No, you didn't. You have 50 cents in your bank account for Christ's sake. Actually, it's a dollar 67. I don't care. I didn't ask. Oh, you're dead. Hey, 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 you forgot your Gatorade. Keep it. Here, it's also here. I do. 
Sherry, bring me out. What a nice guy. Well, at least I'll finally get some of that sweet, succulent blue, unleaked, definitely not spilled for comedic effect. Yay. Three, two, one. Looks like another one to me. <sighs> Yo, Tony, isn't isn't that mob money, man? Should you, should you relax? Tell you what, if it's that big of an issue, I went back all I need in this next game. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of you is Anthony Dufresne? There's two things I learned that night. One, don't borrow money you can't pay back. And two, especially if it's from the mob. I woke up two days later to find my friend staring over my body. Tony, you look terrible. Not as bad as yourself. After a couple of jokes and some rounds, They left. And I immediately got up and started working. I was looking for any job I could find. Found a place that needed some boxes stacked up. And a landscaping company that needed some soil moved. The only thing I knew was that by the end of the month I had to pay back double what I owed them. I chauffeured. I stock shelves. I work security. I even did some things I'm not too proud to admit. Hey, wait! By the height of my venture, I had five jobs, all where I could set my own hours, meaning I could max out the amount legally required by the Labor Standards Act. I was doing anything I could to get some cash. 
I even resorted to scamming some poor folks around the city with placebos that I picked up on the cheap. At the end, I had all the money I needed, plus a thousand for myself. You're about a grand short. Or not. I couldn't pay my bills, I got kicked out of my house, and then I got foreclosed. And at the end, it had me sitting right here. Okay, folks, uh, I know you're going to have a hard time making a decision on this one, probably like I did. Lots of really great choices in this category. Please go and vote for your favorite movie scene right now. All right, and we're back. Okay, it's time to see who the winner is for best movie scene fair. Can I have the envelope, please? Thank you, you may go. All right, this one really was a hard decision. Um, so many great choices here in the finalists. Uh, some super great scene remakes, a couple of really great original scenes, uh, but there can be only one and the winner for best movie scene, The Gatorade by Brady Pruitt. Congratulations, Brady. And you probably noticed um, Evan was in like pretty much all of those videos. Kind of crazy. The man is, he's prolific. What can I say? All right. Now that brings us to our final category of the night before we announce best filmmaker. Uh, that last category is music video. Um, possibly my favorite category. I don't know. Movie scene was really great tonight as well. Uh, the music video project is the culminating project in film one. Uh, just like you would think a music video is, students pick a song, they create a music video for it. Now the key to this one is, I tell them, do not literally interpret the lyrics in your video. It's all about the feeling of the song, the pacing of the song, things like that. And I think the nominees tonight uh, are really great examples of what it is that I want to see in those music videos. So let's check out the final category of the night, which is best music video.
was that? Stop. the breeze. 
head under the ground All I know is I can't face shit right now Guess I'll pop a couple aspirin Stocking up on all my vitamins Washing out the bitter taste in my mouth Should I kiss Mario?
And you liked me because I was blue. But you touched me and suddenly I was a lilac sky. And you decided purple just wasn't for you. Everything is blue. His pills, his hands, his jeans, and now I'm covered in the colors. to kiss someone to kick you there's not a day you couldn't slip through or at least that's the impression I get cause you're smooth and you're wet and she's not aware yet but she's yours she'll be saying you
I don't really know how I got here, and I don't know where my dad is, but I think it's time for you to vote for your favorite music video. Alright, I found the card for the winner of the best music video, and the winner is with the song Brian Storm, Peyton Townsend, and now we're going to look at some videos from the nominees for best filmmaker. You make 
make me feel like I'm alive again. Did you click transition? I clicked it. It's not working. It didn't work. Oh, you didn't. Wait. Wait. Oh, is it on now? What's happening? Hey, everybody. You probably can hear me, but for some reason, the visuals are not there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hold on, everybody. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Here we go. Almost got it, guys. Hang in there. <laughs> okay, yes, everyone's texting me. I'm getting all this stuff, I know. Okay, it's about to go live now. Okay. We're here. I'm so sorry about that, guys. A few little technical glitches there, but I think we're good to go now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, what a night. What a long couple of days we've had. Um, it is now time for us to, you know, do the finishing stuff, like announcing the winners for the um, Audience Choice Awards and then a couple of other things as well. Um, so first off, um, let's just, just jump right into reading off the Audience Choice winners. Um, we'll start with Animated Logo. Um, the winner for Audience Choice Animated Logo Guava Palm, uh, Amelia Benjamin, congratulations. Uh, that's that's a sweep in that one. Um, the Lip Sync video, uh, Jules Wedra for that Stand Tall song. I think that's what it's called, Stand Tall, something like that. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, my tie. They, they, the, the, the warden at the prison let me out uh, for good behavior so that I could present these awards. Um, for lyric video, Peyton Townsend. Uh, the Tick one, so he swept that category. Uh, documentary, the Supernatural or the, the Ghost one at Cuthbertson, um, that's Kai Feely, so congrats, Kai. Uh, for Dialogue Scene, my phone is blowing up. I know it's you guys all texting me right now. Um, so the uh, Dialogue Scene, uh, another sweep, it's uh, the, the James Bond one with uh, Amelia, Morgan, Kai, Jacob, and Jack. Um, for a music video, actually, I'm going to look at that one one last time just to make sure that one was super close. Okay, uh, the music video was Peyton Townsend. That was a another sweep there. Uh, let's see. For commercial, um, Pit Viper, another sweep. Uh, that's Sean, Francesca, Evan, Jack, and Katie. Uh, the stop motion video was uh, Michael Eels Miller's uh, Stranger Things Lego thing. I think it was called like Paranormal Abduction or something like that. That was really cool. Um, the how to video, uh, Michael Eels Miller again uh, for his steak and asparagus meal, which was awesome. And the last one, I probably should have done music video last, but the last uh, audience choice winner is Kai for Kai Feely for the Talladega Nights uh, knife in the leg scene, which was uh, beautifully acted by Evan and company there. All right, um, so those are the winners for the audience choice. Um, now, before I wrap things up, I just want to just give some shout outs um, to all the people that helped with the film festival. Um, so many people, um, Darby, 
uh, Trey. I'm, I'm going to forget people, and, and I'm sorry. I'm a jerk if I forget you. Uh, Sean did a bunch of editing for me. Um, you know, uh, and then I actually have some special gifts for, for some of you. I'm going to show you that in a second here. Um, so Amelia Benjamin, she was, she was not an officer. She was in the video a lot. She helped tremendously uh, with a lot of different parts of that. She might as well have been an officer. Um, so special thanks to Amelia. Um, Fair, why don't you hand me, Fair is here. She's like my little assistant here. Give me one of the small ones there. So um, for for Amelia, Jacob, uh, Evan, Kai, um, you guys are, I'm going to, it's like a little tradition we do here uh, for the officers and people that help out with a, a lot with it. And it's going to be some other people getting these as well. Um, but then, you know, I definitely want to give a special thanks to Evan for being in, in so many different of the videos um, and helping out with the film festival. Kai, you've been amazing. Uh, as well. Um, and then Jacob, Jacob, Jacob was just like a stud with the editing. I mean, he was just like tearing through stuff like crazy, just editing stuff like faster than I, I think I've ever seen anyone edit before. Um, and then last but not least, Fair, you want to hand me the big one there. Um, it's become a tradition, but definitely well deserved. You can just hold it up for me, Fair. Um, so Camilla is getting the big one. Um, Camilla is the president of the film club. Um, she was definitely integral in, um, the planning, the preparation, all this kind of stuff with the film festival, um, and just did a tremendous job with the film club just in general this year. I think we had a really successful year. Um, so a very special thanks to Camilla for, for all that you did. Um, so guys, um, <clears throat> that's going to wrap it up tonight. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much for sticking around for the three hours. Uh, and it's, it's 10, 11, I'm like 11 minutes over. I, I was hoping to get done at 10, but that's just not happening. But, um, again, thank you guys. Sorry for the little glitches here and there. Um, you know, we're going to try better next year. And yes, I know I need to start filming and editing earlier. I, I hear that every year. I agree. All right. So guys, we're going to sign off now. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. You guys take care of yourselves. Can you wave? Just keep waving until I hit stop. Ha, ha, ha.